Hey everyone and welcome to a new video. In this one we're going to look at the AKS dev extension for VS Code and this extension is all about working with Draft. Now I have a video on this channel about Draft without the extension so if you're interested of course please go and check that. If you're more into reading what Draft is about I have a blog post about it as well. Now let's get started and look at this extension. We are going to work with the developer tools for Azure Kubernetes service extension for VS Code and you can find it in the marketplace. Be aware that this extension today is in preview, so there might be some issues here and there while you use the extension. Now, this extension is actually meant to offer several developer experiences. The current experience offered is the draft experience. Now I'm not going to focus on the installation of the extension, I'm sure you know how to do that, but a couple of things are important here. First of all, make sure you have installed the most recent version of the Azure CLI and that you are logged in to your subscription. Secondly, also make sure you install the GitHub CLI, so the GH CLI, and also ensure that you're authenticated to your GitHub account so that this tool can also interact with your chosen repository. I also had an issue with Draft itself. Uh, I had to update uh, Draft to a more recent uh, version. So if you have issues with the extension on your own system, think about also uh, installing the most recent version of the Draft CLI. Now let's get started and see how this thing works inside VS Code. On GitHub, I have a super API repo, which is basically some Go code. That's a public repo and I've opened it here now in VS Code. I have working code here, but I don't have deployment files, I don't have a Helm chart, I don't have Kubernetes manifests. And let's ignore these Docker file samples here. Let's just think I don't have a Docker file either. When the extension is installed, you can just right click here and then you'll find a menu here, run the AKS DevX tool. And as I said, only the draft tools are available today. That's the only experience offered to a developer. Now I'm gonna create my deployment files and you'll get a nice UI. Well, well, you get the UI and there you can then select, okay, what is my project language? Several are supported. And of course, based on the language that you select, Draft will create hopefully a working Docker file for you. In this case, I'm going to ask to create both the Docker file and Kubernetes deployment file, but as you can see, we can select one or the other. Draft needs to know what port my pods are running on. In my case, that's port 8080. And I'm gonna call my app, uh, my super app here. Now, as of deployment type, I'm going to select Helm. I think that's what most of us are using. So I'm presuming here that indeed Draft will create a Helm chart for me. Let's submit this and see what happens. Yeah, it's clear. Draft was executed successfully here. So under the covers, these are just Draft commands that are being run. That's the first step. Now let's see what has changed. Draft has generated this Docker file for me. This Docker file is very generic and also very simple, and it might not work for the code that you're writing. In my case, for example, my main Go, so the starting point uh, is in CMD slash app. Yeah, that just won't work with the Docker file I have over here. If I look at my make file and I look at the go build command that I usually uh, run here, that is indeed go build. And I'm gonna say build everything which you find under app. Um, so I would have to change this in the Docker file. The point being here that you shouldn't rely too much on the Docker file that is being built for you. There will be mistakes in there, but as a developer, you know how to fix them. Now, I don't really like these kinds of Docker files. It's a single stage. It's gonna be a very big image because this image, the Golang image, contains, of course, all the build tools for Go and that's then also used to run my application. So I'd rather use a Docker file that is a two-stage Docker file. In the first stage, that's the one you see here, I'm going to build my application. 
And in the second stage, I'm going to use, in this case, the DistroLess project from Google. I'm going to use DistroLess Static to create a very small container that just contains my app. And of course, the entry point is going to be app as well. So I'm going to switch out the Docker file that Draft has created, and I'm going to use my own Docker file. Draft also created a chart for me. The chart is in the uh, charts folder and here you find the templates of the chart. It's a simple deployment to deploy my application, my container, right? My pods, uh, a namespace is going to be uh, created and there's also a service to make sure I can reach the application uh, at a networking uh, level. What Draft is also doing is there's a values.yaml but also a production.yaml. Production.yaml is a values file for Helm that is used in this case to create a service of type load balancer. And of course with AKS and also with other kind of distributions in the cloud, this gives you a public IP to reach your application, in this case on port 80. The next step is to configure GitHub OpenID Connect configuration. I already discussed this in my other video and in my blog post. And to do this inside the extension, you would just right click over here. You will go to the uh, DevX tool, draft tools, and then set up GitHub Open ID Connect. What happens here, uh, just to summarize this, is that a trust will be created between GitHub and your Azure environment. And a GitHub token can be exchanged for a Azure token that allows GitHub to authenticate to the subscription listed here on the screen. For example, it can then just log in to that subscription and deploy an application to your AKS cluster. In a moment, I will show the application that was created. I also have already clicked on submit before, so I won't do that now. The result of the OpenID Connect configuration should be, of course, this, that it was done successfully. Now, a lot of things can go wrong here, so make sure that you have the latest version of the Azure CLI, that you're logged into your subscription, that you have the latest version of the GitHub CLI, that GitHub CLI is authenticated to your GitHub account, and also make sure that you have the latest version of Draft. Most of the time, when it goes wrong, it goes wrong here. The OIDC setup has created an app registration called My Super App. And this, of course, is created in Azure Active Directory. The important setting in My Super App is in Certificates and Secrets and then the Federated Credentials. This configures when GitHub is allowed to exchange a GitHub token for a Azure AD credential. We allow this for pull requests, but also for commits to main and master. So for example, if your workflow is running when there's a change to main, yeah, that will work. But if, for example, there's a workflow running when a change is committed to another branch, yeah, that won't work because there's no credential for this. In my case, I'm going to add a credential because I'm working from the DevTools branch. So I'm going to go to GitHub Actions, and then I'm going to say, well, my organization name is Gebake. My repository name is Super, and of course, type this correctly, Super API. And I'm going to work for a specific branch here. The branch is called DevTools, right? I'm going to call this here uh, DevTools as well. And in the description, I'm going to also type DevTools. When I add this federated credential, this means that whenever I run a workflow, when there's a change to the DevTools branch, well, that workflow is allowed to exchange the GitHub token for an Azure AD token that authenticates to my Azure uh, subscription that I want to use. The OIDC setup also made changes to my GitHub repository. So Super API, Settings, and then Secrets, there are some Actions secrets. Now, never mind the other secrets, they are not a part of the OIDC setup. The important one is this one here, the Azure Client ID. The Azure Client ID is the app ID of the app registration that I just shown you. The second thing that's important is the Azure Subscription ID. 
course GitHub needs to know to what subscription to authenticate and that it gets from this secret. It also needs to know the Azure tenant ID because it needs to know where to get the token from, what the tenant to get a token for. These three values are also created by this setup OIDC option in the developer tools. Now it's time to generate a GitHub Actions workflow. I only need to go here, right click, then go to DevX tool, draft tools, and then generate workflow. I then get the following questions here. Of course, you already need an AKS cluster name. Draft won't deploy this for you. The Azure resource group name where I have my cluster here is RGAKS. And I also need a container registry name because of course I need to build and push a container image. The workflow will build that container image for me and push this to ACR HEBA default in this case. I pre-created that ACR uh, already. The container name inside ACR will be my super app. And it's very important, I want to run, in this case as an example, I want to uh, deploy when I push to a GitHub branch, so in this case DevTools. That's also the reason why I added the token to the Azure AD app earlier. Otherwise, again, the workflow wouldn't be able to grab an Azure AD token to log in to my subscription. Now, what happens is when I click here on Submit, the uh, GitHub Actions workflow will be created and it will appear in, of course, the .github folder. And here you have this workflow. Let's examine this workflow. I'm only going to go through the basic jobs that are inside this workflow. First of all, the workflow runs when you push changes to the DevTools branch, and then it will build an image for you. It's important that it first logs in to your Azure AD subscription, right? And this step is clever enough to know that when you only supply the client ID, the subscription ID, and the tenant ID, it knows how to use OIDC to exchange the GitHub token for an Azure AD token that can log on to that Azure subscription. When it has the Azure credentials, it can run the AZ ACR build command. That command uses an ACR quick task to build and push the container image to ACR. That basically means that the container image is not built on the GitHub runner, it is built by ACR directly. Now, what this workflow also does is creating a secret. This is a image pool secret. It's a generic secret that is created to connect basically to a container registry. That's not really required when you have given your AKS cluster access to your ACR using Active Directory. Now, it's there, it won't hurt us, so we'll leave it in uh, as it was foreseen. Then, of course, the deploy step is the most important one. It needs to have a successful build image and create secret. And again, it logs in to your Azure subscription using OIDC Connect. It gets Kubernetes context credentials. So that's also what's happening here in the background. And then we're using the bake tool here or the bake action. And the bake action uses Helm as a renderer to generate normal deployment and service and other kinds of YAML files for Kubernetes. The manifest will be an output of this bake command. That uh, or those manifests are then used by the Kubernetes deploy action to basically deploy to Kubernetes. What manifests, as I said, the output of the step that does the baking. That's basically how the system works. Now, if I were to build a workflow, I probably would do it a little bit different. I wouldn't actually do the baking step. I would use Helm install or Helm upgrade uh, commands, but just as a way to get this to work quickly and to deploy the application to your cluster from a developer perspective, like a dev cluster of some sorts, this could be okay. It's important to understand that this workflow file and also the other things that uh, Draft creates is not meant to be production ready. Now, you can use it as a hint to work towards a production ready uh, deployment, but I don't consider this to be fully uh, production ready. It's my point of view, um, but that's something that I need you uh, to take away from this. So now we have this uh, workflow here. I think it's time to commit all of this to our uh, GitHub repo. 
and let's see what happens. I just committed all the changes to the DevTools branch, and that includes the Docker file, the Helm chart, and also the GitHub workflow. And after pushing all those files to the branch, as you can see, the workflow is running. The workflow results in this build image, create secret, and then deployment. And the deployment yeah, must have succeeded. It's all nice and green here. If I click, I can see indeed that my deploy application worked here. There might be some warnings, but in the end, we run Kubectl apply to apply the manifests that were generated by the bake action to our cluster. If we go to our cluster, we can indeed see that in our workloads, there is a workload called my super app. Well, there's something in front of it as well. As you'll see in a moment, it is called release name my super app. Release name is a result of using the bake step. We're not using actually Helm and specifying a release, and that's why the release name is not filled in. A little bit sloppy, but it all uh, works as it's supposed to uh, work. And when we go to our services and ingresses, a service of type load balancer was automatically created by our deployment. It's also called release name my super app. And here we get our external IP to test if we can indeed reach our service. In my case, this is just a application that returns hello from super API. Nothing fancy there. So now you have seen how to use the AKS DevX tool and the draft tools within to create the deployment files, open ID connect configuration, and to generate and then run that workflow. It's of course up to you if you'd rather use the draft tool directly or use the Azure CLI and draft, or just use the uh, plugin or the extension as you've seen here. I hope you like this. And see you another time. Bye-bye.